Hi folks, and welcome to this video on the topic of demand. This is the first in three videos that there's going to be on this topic. In this first one, we're going to be looking at what we mean by demand, the law of demand, and how to draw a demand curve. The following videos are going to be about price elasticity or sensitivity of demand, how demand, uh, quantity demanded changes in response to changes in price. And we're also going to be looking at what changes or affects demand and shifts our demand curve. If you want to know when those videos are up, then please subscribe, click the like button uh, and get notifications so that you know when there's more content for your GCSE economics course. The first thing that we need to know is what we mean by the term demand. And we need to be very specific here. We're talking about effective demand. That is the willingness and ability of someone to buy a good or service at a given price over a time period. It's really important that we don't just talk about what we want to buy, that we also talk about people's ability to buy that. As we've seen in previous videos, people, they have needs, they have wants, but those wants are unlimited. So we need to narrow this down and say we are only concerned here with what people have the ability to buy, that they can back up with their money, their resources, their time and their space to store or consume this. In economics, we make the assumption that consumers will wish to maximise their utility. That is from their money and their resources, they want to get the most satisfaction, the most welfare that they can out of their purchases. Now, what that means is that they're constantly making decisions about what to spend their money on and what gives them the most benefit in return. We start with drawing our demand curves by labeling the diagram. And what we're going to show here is the relationship between two things. We're looking at the relationship between price that is what we have to pay for a good or service. And what we're comparing that to is at each price, what is the quantity that we are going to be willing and able to buy? So we label our other axis quantity. Now you can here work in money figures. Um, the example I'm gonna use is we're looking at consumption of sandwiches. And if we said, if the price was four pound for a sandwich, over the course of a week, how many would I buy? Well, to me, four pound is quite expensive for a sandwich. I'd look at that and the other options that are available that I can spend that money on. And I'd say, opportunity cost, I'd rather buy something else. So I'm gonna buy a very small quantity of sandwiches. At four pound, maybe I'm just buying one a week. So what we can do is we can say, I've got, we label along here, quantity one, two, three, for five, we say at four pounds, I'm only going to buy one sandwich. However, if, and this is a really important point with demand, we're looking at our if points here. If the price was only three pound, would I buy more sandwiches? Well, yeah, the price is lower. I might decide that at three pound, a sandwich is better for me than buying a sausage roll or a burger. So I, it's likely that the amount that I will buy over a week will increase. Let's say that at three pound for a sandwich, I'm going to buy two. So we can plot that point there. If the price was lower still, down to two pounds, say yes, that's a great deal. I wanna buy more of these and I'm gonna buy them at the expense of other goods and services. I'm going to buy three. And if the price came down to a pound, We'll look at that and go, even better deal, I'm gonna buy four. Why would I not buy more? Well, it's possible that even at a lower price, I might buy four a week. I buy one on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. By the time I get to Friday, maybe I'm sick of sandwiches. Maybe I want something else. I've kind of maximized the utility that I'm getting from that good or service, and I'll buy something else instead. What we can then do is we can join up these points to create our very first individual demand curve. The way we do that is we simply join them together there. Sometimes it's a straight line, sometimes it actually is a curve, but whatever we use, we use the term demand curve or sometimes demand schedule, okay? And all it is showing here is it's a graphical representation of at each price, if the price was this, how much, what would be the quantity that I would buy at that? 
And at the moment, these are all still if points. We don't know what will actually happen in the market because there's other variables that help to determine that that we'll look at later when we get to the supply topic. Now, that's my individual demand curve, but there's lots of other people, lots of other consumers, and they will have their own individual demand curves. For example, we could look at another individual. Um, we could say if the price was four pound, they might be more willing to buy sandwiches. Maybe they, they really love a good sandwich. At four pounds, they're going to buy two a week. At three pounds, they'll buy three a week. At two pounds, they'll buy four a week. And at five pounds, they're gonna buy, uh, sorry, at one pound, they're going to buy five a week. So they have got a different individual demand curve. Now, what businesses and what us as economists are interested in, the individual demand curve is nice, but what we're really looking at and what we'll use later to help determine prices is what we call the market demand curve. And this is where we are looking at the demand that comes from all consumers within that market. Really simple to construct these. We would take all of the individual demand curves and we add them together. So what we'll end up with, if the price was four pound, I'm buying one sandwich, the next person is buying two sandwiches, we add them together. So the market demand is going to be at four pounds, there will be three sandwiches being bought. And we can do the same with the others as well. So at three pounds, we'd say I was buying two, person B is buying three, we add that together and we've got, well there, we've got five sandwiches and we, carry that on, we end up with our market demand curve. Like with the individual demand curve, the market demand curve is still a series of if points. It's if the price is four pound, this is how much will be bought. If the price is three pound, this is how much will be consumed or purchased. Now, any change in price is going to lead to a shift along that curve. And we can call these contractions or extensions. If we're starting at a price here of three pounds and we're buying five in the market. If the price increases, then what will happen? Higher price, people are less willing and able to buy that good or service. So here we move up to this point here and we call this a contraction. Demand has contracted, it has got smaller in that market or that is what would happen if the price was to rise. Conversely, if we go back to our three pound starting price, if the price was to fall, more people are willing and able to buy that good or service. So demand extends. We have here an extension of demand, or we would have if the price fell. Again, we come back to that point of this, it's if the price falls, demand would increase. We'll look at how extensions and contractions and changes in demand happen in a later video. When we, and later on after that, we'll put these together with the supply curve and start to look at something called the price mechanism or the market mechanism that determines how prices are set in markets for most goods and services. Final takeaway from this lesson, folks, the law of demand. And all this states is that the quantity demanded varies inversely to the price. And this is something that is eminently logical. If something has a higher price, we're less likely to buy it because assuming we're aiming to maximize our utility, we will get a better deal, more utility from spending our money on a different good or service. Price goes up, the amount we consume will fall. If the price goes down, the amount we consume or are willing to purchase will increase. Please check out the next video, hit like, subscribe, leave a comment if you'd like, and I'll see you in the next one.